Lecture 3. Alright, last week we were revising fetch, decode, execute and write back. Okay, we looked at some flowcharts. We were looking at programming an algorithm. This week we're covering this. ENIAC. This is the ENIAC computer. Yeah? It had 18,000 valves. The valve was taken place, replaced not by the transcousin but the, by, by the transistor. Look on page 348. The C drive is the main memory of the computer, but the temporary memory is RAM. Computer memory card. How does the computer memory it's card work? It's complicated. It's quite uh, complicated. complicated. Uh, memory cards uh, work by memory cards work by allowing RAM through, a distinct, through a distinct hierarchy. Through a distinct hierarchy. Now look. Now it's look. not quite that easy. It's not quite that easy. But it's not quite that complicated. But it's not quite either. that complicated either. Before we can talk about before what we can makes talk a about computer what memory? makes a computer memory card work, let's take a look at one. Wee wee. They're a small board with little chips on them. It's the information or a software program is going to be brought out of the hard drive across the motherboard and right on into the memory chip right here in its memory slots. These memory chips actually hold all the software while you're working on it. The programs or any of the things that you actually are working on at the moment. A memory chip kind of works like our conscious memory. Whatever we're thinking about, what I need to do, where I'm going, that's how the memory card works. Information goes from the memory card right into the CPU, where all the decisions are actually made. A memory card works by thinking about whatever is going on right now. If you're working on a word processing document, if you're making a movie, whatever you happen to be doing at the moment it's coming from the memory card. The more memory that you have, the more you can think about. The more memory that you put onto your computer, the more things it can do at the same time. So how does a memory card work? Very much like our own memory works. Whatever we're thinking about right now, that's exactly how the memory card works. Now, if you want to know more than what we told you here, hey, read the flipping manual. Okay, also known as volatile memory. All right, what is this? Ground yourself. Otherwise, you'll destroy any RAM memory that you're putting into the computer. All right, so use a grounding bracelet. Page three 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 one three or three to four. Inside the hard drive. Now what does it look like? Okay, let's have a see. Okay, so here we have a, a computer hard drive. Uh, which has a transparent cover so that you can see the internal workings. Um, there's a voice coil actuator here which is going to move the servo arm um, uh, across the uh, magnetic surface here where the, the, the data is. Now what we'll see is um, some examples of tracking on the servo arm. Um, so there are computer tracks, if I imagine my fingers here being four tracks, 
When it does a one track seek, it will be moving to this track, then this one, then this one, then this one. Then it will switch to two track seeks where it will jump two tracks at a time. Uh, and then four and eight tracks and so on. Now it happens so quickly that it looks almost like smooth continuous motion, but it's not. It's really moving to one particular track, locking on it within 10% tracking error so it could read write data, and then moving on to the next one. And I'll spin it up now and we'll see the demo. Okay, so the disk starts up with a certain initialization procedure, and then it will go into this test demo. Um, this is not what your normal computer hard drive would do when it was running, but it's gonna demonstrate um, seeking different tracks and I want to emphasize that uh, it, it accurately locks onto a track each time. So now the disk has spun up, and now you can see it's doing one track seeks. So it's moving onto one track at a time, locking on and moving on to the next one. So you can see as it, as it does this motion, it looks kind of continuous, but it's not. It's actually moving from one specific track to another, jumping, um, I think we're up to 32 or 64 tracks at a time. Okay, so we've seen inside there, we've seen how this moves across and exchanges magnetic messages to the hard drive where all documents and programs are kept. It's generally liable, but things can go wrong. Capacity usually measured in gigabytes, but images take up more space. The hard drive since 1956. All right. There it was in 56. There it was in 83. There it was in 2004. The disk spins at 100 revs per second. The head hovers. It says a millionth of an inch away from the top there data stored as tiny magnetic charges. Okay, there, look at that. The platter, the head. All right, it's the head picking up magnetic charges. ROM memory, read-only memory, also known as firmware. It's an integrated circuit powered with specific data when it is manufactured. Look at that. That had a ROM chip inside it. Here's the definition. The World Wide Web is an interconnected system of computers all over the world that store information in multimedia form. Sir Tim Berners-Lee came up with the concept. What concept? The concept of the hyperlink. All right. Berners-Lee wrote a simple common language called hypertext markup language HTML. And that's behind web pages. Electronic business. Are we using it? Are we buying things? Is it a good experience? What are the benefits of e-business? Right. It integrates business functions. Improving marketing good customer relationships. It enables better employee communications and you get a streamlining process. IICES, two ICES. Online shopping details, here are more. 1.966 billion people are online. Read these details. Online shopping figures in the United Kingdom. Here they are till 2007. Of course, this 
is Oxford Street and the shopping on here is a kind of barometer for what shopping is going to take place over the rest of the United Kingdom. Online shopping in 2010 right, will be worth £60 billion pound, or about 8.9% of the UK's total retail sales. That was in the Metro newspaper 19th of October 2010. If we look at communication over the years of history, speak, shout, letter, run, horse, arrow, smoke, flag and semaphore, bells, mirrors, and then Samuel Morse gets a grant to create telegraph poles and wire across it to send Morse code. All right. Then we get voice telegraph, radio message, no poles, mobile phones, fewer poles, Steve Jobs and the Apple phone. What's next? Where's it going to? Okay, let's move along. The first Morse codes were What hath God wrought? The first telephone message was Mr. Watson, come in here. Ray Tomlinson came up with the email. Alright, the first email message was QWERTY UIOP, the top line of the keyboard. There is Sir Alexander Graham Bell. Okay, some things happen in life which are very moving. Here's one of them. Sputnik backfires. Advanced Research Project Agency or ARPANET. What did the Advanced Research Project Agency bring about? Laser printing, graphical user interface, Windows, the mouse and of course the Ethernet connection. In the background you can hear Morse code. Let's move along. Now, e-business and e-commerce and e-government, they improve communication, they cut costs and cut the middlemen. Tesco's has gone online, hasn't it? It took 10 years for it to make a profit, but it does make a profit online. If we compare these figures, a transaction checking a bank balance might cost $1.08, but if you checked it online it would cost a tenth of that. Answering a customer request, 10 to 20 dollars, 10 to 20 cents online. And so all of these figures are making things cheaper. When I looked at this book, the set book for this course, I paid 7 99 new, but I could have bought it for a penny on eBay. E-government. The government now is trying to put things online and save on real people. Online language populations. The Chinese, of course. The English, much less. Let's put a look at another chart. Here it was. There's the Chinese. There are the English, 500 million. And then all sorts of other languages in between. Spanish. Where are the French? French, French, French. Oh, down there. Mm. Web statistics. Countries with most internet users. China, United States, 
Japan, Germany, Britain. Web statistics, March the 1st, 2010. 19 millions. That's web pages created daily. 1.9 web pages created daily. 50% of all traffic goes to the top websites. Okay. Hypermedia. Multimedia. Combination of five things. Text, pictures, sound, animation, and video. Alright, this is an animation that took me 20 hours to produce. Better with music in the background. Alright, let's move along. Okay, thank you very much.